What's up everybody? This is Paul the Comic Book Misfit coming at you with a new unboxing video today. So today we're going to be opening up Comic Bento. Comic Bento is a subscription service much like Horror Pack, which you may have seen in some of my previous videos, uh, Loot Crate, Geek Fuel. These are companies that uh, for, for a flat fee, sometimes including shipping, they send you products to your door. Uh, you never really know what you're going to get. There's usually a theme involved. So Without further ado, Comic Bento, they send comic books. They send graphic novels or trade paperbacks. So th that's awesome. You know, for 20 bucks plus shipping, you get at least about double, maybe even triple, you amount, triple the amount of value that you put in already. So this is the first one. We're going to open it up. Let me show you the box so you get an idea. So this is what the box looks like when it hits your door. You know, covering up the uh, shipping address there. So let's go ahead and open it up. Got the heavy metal pink scissors. Let's go ahead and slice this boy up. All right, got one, got two. Make sure I don't slice the fingers. Don't want to bleed on the comics. Coming over here, bam. So we're gonna go ahead and open up the box. It's kind of what it looks like. Everything is wrapped. There's uh, air cushion packets in there. Make sure your products don't get, you know, messed up in the mail. Oh, wow. This is actually quite a bit of stuff here. So we'll go ahead and put the box down here. We'll leave that for Hank Comic Book Club. As you can see, everything's already vacuum sealed and, you know, weatherproof. Hope, you know, hopefully it's weatherproof. I don't know about y'all, but here in Texas, we got some crazy weather going on. You know, other parts of the country, other parts of the world. If you get your items, at least you can feel safe knowing that they're protected, they're, they're weatherproof, you know, nothing's really going to get damaged. And I do have to say, Comic Bento, the customer service has been awesome. Uh, this is the second box I had to receive from them. First one kind of got a little bit lost in the mail. You know, it's the holidays, shipping, you know, it, it happens. I immediately contacted Comic Bento. They were amazing at getting me my product. Uh, they kept, we kept in constant contact, you know, have nothing but positive stuff to say about this company. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend it. And let's go ahead and just look at the products aside. They sold me on the customer service. You know, just the fact that they cared enough to send me a replacement box for something that they could have just blown off. You know, that, that speaks volumes to them. So package is open. And it looks like we've got about, throw that down there, we got about five trades. Yeah, we got about five trades here. So there's a little pamphlet here that says the theme for this past month for November was Remember the Titans. You can see that, the glare there. But anyway, this is a little pamphlet. It gives you a breakdown of the, the comics you've got in in this month's uh, box. So let's go ahead and look at them. Well, first, we've got Hulk Season 1. I mean, that right there, right off the bat, you got a triple-A character, one of the most iconic characters in Marvel Comics history and, you know, pop culture history. You know, wow. It seems to be an entire volume. Season 1. Includes a digital copy. So if you, you know, you... you have the app on your on your phone, your tablet, your laptop. You can read this on the go. You can, if you don't want to take the actual book with you. So it says New York Times bestseller Fred Van Lente and acclaimed artist Tom Fowler retell the beginnings of the Green Goliath and his alter ego Bruce Banner for a new generation, featuring Betty Ross, General Thunderbolt Ross, Gamma Base, Rick Jones, and the introduction of a new Hulk villain. That's pretty damn cool. Uh, Fred Van Lente is actually a really good writer. I loved his stuff with G.I. Joe that he did a few years ago. I actually got to meet him at a local uh, San Antonio comic shop. Really down-to-earth guy. Uh, he also did another great title called Archer and Armstrong. So, yeah, I can't wait to read this one. This might actually be one I put on the app, too. You know, digital comic. Great. We're off to a great start. So, second one. This is from Dynamite Comics. This is Warlord of Mars. Deja Thoris, huh? Warlord of Mars. 
This might be a tie into John Carter, Warlord of Mars. Uh, for those that don't know, John Carter is actually um, an old, uh, as old a character as, say, Conan or even Flash Gordon. It goes back to the early part of the 20th century. Uh, I believe it was Edgar Rice Burroughs. You know, that. Let's look this up. I believe it was Edgar Rice Burroughs that wrote the character of John Carter. And please don't compare the original John Carter character to the dismal Disney movie. Oh, man. That was not... That, did, that didn't do well. Let's see. John Carter... Yeah, it was Edgar Rice Burroughs. Okay. Uh, this is actually pretty cool because John Carter is actually the char a character that's part of the public domain now. If you want to Google public domain characters, John Carter's there along with a lot of the... Uh, Classic fairy tales, you know, Wizard of Oz, stuff like that. So may, maybe why you see so many different interpretations of older stories, because they're public domain characters, and you don't have to pay licensing rights. You know, unless you in, in, include new characters and scenarios and stuff, then those belong to the, you know, respective artists and creators. But apparently this, this kind of looks a little bit almost like Thor. Um... Try to show some artwork in here. Pretty cool artwork. A lot of great uh, popping colors. This is definitely not one for children. <laughs> this particular character, uh, Deja Thoris, I believe is her name. I, I'm not familiar with this, so I'm definitely going to give this a read. It does feature quite a bit of nudity. That's all I'm going to show you. You little kids out there. You know, you didn't see that. <laughs> it's got some great artwork, some great flash panels in the back. Uh, a lot of these poses seem somewhat reminiscent of Frank Pizzetta's fantasy artwork. You know, you got some quick glimpses there for those that may not want to see some of that extra detail. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, even that, the cover alone, very reminiscent of Frank Frazetta. For those that know, that don't know, Frazetta was an amazing, amazing fantasy artist. This guy would draw Vikings and barbarians and, you know, anything you can imagine based around, you know, this type of artwork or something like Conan. Frazetta did it. I got to see uh, an exhibit of his original artwork at the Austin Comic Con in 2013. I was floored. The, the attention to detail that that man had was out oh my god it was i think my personal opinion that artwork should be in the louvre you know it should be up there with some of the most prominent artists the world has ever produced because that man had talent he had vision so yeah that was my little rant spot for zeta so the next comic this one i can honestly say i have never heard of kaiju max this is from Oni Press. I have never read anything from Oni. Kaiju Max. So right off the bat, the word Kaiju and some of the images, um, you know, you're going to see monsters. You're going to see Godzilla-like creatures. And the artwork kind of looks a little reminiscent of, say, an anime. Yeah, I'm flipping through these pages and some of this artwork Kind of looks cartoonish, looks uh, very much like <laughs> something you'd see in an anime. So let's read the back. Let's see. Um, Where the worst of the worst kaiju monsters are securely locked away from the human world, whether they be villains, anti heroes, equal parables, or nuclear metaphors, follow doting father Electrogor as he stands up to the cruel space superhuman Warden King. See corrupt guard Gupta manage his illicit uranium dealing empire and try to pay off his gambling debts to the Queen of the Moon. From two time Eisner winner, Eisner winning cartoonist Xander Cannon, Kaiju Max combines the grim cruelties of prison dramas with the explosive excitement of giant monster Kaiju cinema in one of the most exciting new comic series of 2015. So this trade collects issues one through six, the entire first season of Kaiju Max. Interesting. Would have never thought to combine prison and kaiju, or you know, kaiju monsters type. This is that's actually pretty cool. I've never heard heard of Xander Cannon. I've never read any of his work, 
but I'm excited to give it. I mean, it's an entire entire volume. You got an entire storyline here. It was even better. You know, if if you're not familiar with this, if you're not familiar to go out and you know with 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 the smaller presses to go out and look for something new, they send this to your door. This is opening up kind of new uh, avenues for comic book fans. You know, it's definitely going to expose me to a new publishing house, a new writer, and maybe even a new uh, intellectual property. I'm pretty excited. I mean, I look it, but inside I'm kind of. Ooh. <laughs> All right, so going on next, we have Thread the Barbarian. Thread the Barbarian from Titan Comics, another publisher that I haven't uh, haven't heard from before. Oh wow, that again, artwork. That artwork is uh, it says it's the original cover for issue number four from Thread. That right there, again, looks like something Frank Frazetta would have done. Really cool two-page splash of a dinner scene. This is actually some pretty cool artwork. Oh, I can't wait to read what this character is. I don't know if you can see that without the glare, but that character looks like a badass. Whether he's a villain or a hero, he looks like he's getting ready to wreck some stuff. So let's see. Thread the Barbarian. Thread, big of muscle, tiny of head, which is fine for Thread as you only need a big brain if you need to talk your way out of trouble. Instead, he lets his axe speak for him. In the first collected volume, volume of this highly uh, popular cult hero, Thread faces down the necromancer, uh, Tomi Kupa, pro protects his beer supplies from fierce frost giants, faces his arch nemesis, assumes the stately role of the king he accidentally killed, and gets his pints spilled on a mission in the depths of the primeval jungle. <laughs> this sounds like it's going to be somewhat comical. I mean, to go from facing down a necromancer, a dark villain, to protecting his beer supplies. Wow, you're definitely going to get a bit of a, a wide gamut of stuff with this one. Again, it's kind of cool. Character has, has a huge axe. Wonder what kind of comparisons he may have to Conan. So interesting, cool. Last one we got the Champions from Marvel Comics. Another Marvel property. See, we got a Ghost Rider. Looks like Hercules on there. We got Black Widow, Iceman, and I believe that's Angel up top from the X Men. You know, don't quote me on that. I may not be familiar with that one. This looks like. It is an origin story. Yeah, this is... Wow. This is actually pretty old. I'm looking for the copyright. Yeah, it is. The Avenging Angel, Deadly Black Widow, Go Doomed to Find Ghost Rider, Hercules and Iceman. The world still needs champions. Well, as you can see, the artwork is, you know... Classic styles, kind of dated. Um, the artist, uh, penciled by Don Heck, inked by Mike Esposito. So I mean, yeah, it's got that classic Marvel Comics feel. Uh, this had to be maybe sometime in the late Silver Age, maybe early Bronze Age. You know, we're from uh, late 60s to early 80s, mid 80s. No, don't quote me on that. I'm just taking a guess here just by looking at the artwork. Yeah, it seems to be the first couple of issues of how this particular team got together. There's also quite a bit of ads for new Marvel properties, like the new version of the Champions. You know, there's that version is actually pretty cool. That's an ongoing Marvel series. If you guys would like to see me uh, start reviewing that, leave me some comments. Leave me some comments, maybe some recommendations. Give me a thumbs up. You know, say, hey, yeah, let's check this out. Let's see, we got a teen in that version. There's a Teenage Scott Summers, Nova, Ultimate Spider-Man, which is Miles Morales, the, uh, the new Hulk, and Ms. Marvel. We're all teens. So pretty cool. There's a pretty cool image of a uh, Ghost Rider riding along with Iceman there. I'm liking this. Comic Bento. Wow. So far, I've 
gotten five trades. Just the really the cover price on just this hardbound edition of Hulk Season One it says twenty four ninety nine in the U S. If that's what it's going for, that paid for the entire box. You know that was worth the purchase of the box. Everything else is extra, which is great. I'm loving this. I can't wait to delve into this. Start reading. Uh, give you guys some impressions. You know, I'll leave some uh, likes and dislikes in the in the comments. If you have anything you want to add, you want to see me do some more uh, unboxing videos, hit me up in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, you know, share the video. And stay tuned. We're going to have some more unboxing videos. We're going to have some more reviews, some more impressions. I'm trying to do as much as I can on this page. So in the meantime, you guys have some wonderful happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. You know, take care of each other. Everybody just enjoy the holiday season. So this is Paul the Comic Book Misfit. Godspeed, my friends.